Dan O'Shea. Hi, Jim Fannin. What the hell's going on, brother? Thanks for making the time. I've been chasing you for a while. I appreciate it. You got some downtime with the business or what? This is almost exactly like the setup at 610. <laughs> there, there is some stop advertising some, for some, terrestrial radio. There is some. <laughs> it's almost like odd uh, pictures on the wall. It looks like there's some tea towels. <laughs> this is what I came for. The true <laughs> monogram tea towels. Some monogram tea towels. Uh, yes, I, I'm, oh, I'm uh, embarrassed. I'm, I'm off the road now for uh, for a little bit. Yes, I always call it uh, my well back in the day when my before. Man, you guys are blowing up now. But back in the day, I used to call it, you know, hibernation. My son, the hurricanes migrate, uh, mm. hi hibernation, because there was a time there where you went away from September to kind of March. Certainly, certainly. And now it's uh, maybe I don't see the guys as much between December and March, but uh, my work is ongoing. It's is, is very ongoing. So. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I just set up shop and I do, you know, I mean, I do full-time agent work. So if you're talking eight to ten hours a day, you can't really uh, keep regular hours with that sort of thing. Okay, so let's hit Mice on the Hurricane first and then we'll get into Vegas Funeral Records. And sure. I want to really go a deep dive into the acts. And then uh, you've been, I don't know, do you get acknowledged for the inspiration that you are often, especially when it comes to the mentorship or uh, or the coaching and sobriety or your vulnerability and talking about, you know, you cleaning up your life and going sober? Uh, I don't know. I think that, you know, uh, a lot of times people know because, you know, Hurricane has sort of been a band for about 10 years. But uh, in most uh, people's eyes, it's about three years old. And when people ask, you know, what was the change, I would say, well, there's a few things. You know, we had a big personnel change. And, uh, you know, we obviously brought in Sylvie, and we, we lost some members, and we brought in some, some great players. And we made a big financial commitment. Vegas Funeral started, and uh, and I got, I got clean and sober, which, you know, uh, if you ask the guys what the band was like back then, it was, you know, it was a, it was a pretty big party. And uh, it, it's very far from that now. Now I'm in the what I call the Law and Order room, the room where we watch Law and Order, then we go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> a buddy of mine, when he got sober, and he struggled with it a few times, fell off a few times, but uh, the the first one he kicked, and the biggest problem for him was alcohol. Yeah. So he played around, and he I think he became an occasional abuser rather than a, a perpetual alcoholic. And mm. and you know, uh, but he said to me. Uh, that since his sobriety, he called himself Mr. Available. And when you talk about his availability, one, when he was boozed up, and then two, when he had to recover from the booze, he was Mr. Unavailable. So the, the opportunity that he lost, the sobriety gave him this moniker of Mr. Available. I can do it anytime. I'm not subject to the effects of alcohol. Yeah, the recovery, and I used to call it the pursuit. And now, I don't know if you remember, back in the old days when you were on <laughs> – the station that shall not be named. <laughs> uh, I used to come in. I used to bring beer with me. So this time I brought myself a non-alcoholic. Grolsch. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, drinking lawnmower clippings. <laughs> but if you can. Bex is better. Yeah. If you can just get past. I, I've made my peace with what they taste like. And I have told myself that I now enjoy them. <laughs> so we're sticking with that story. I uh, enjoy them as well. Um, well, not all of them. But. I realized that when I quit drinking, and I'm currently I am drinking, uh, I, I, again, I tend to be the guy that's uh, the occasional abuser. So, uh, but now that I've cut, and then, so the occasional br abuser turns into the more often abuser, then you're drinking every day. But um, si w when I quit beer or alcohol, I would often chug non-alcoholic beer just the way i you know i don't i love the taste of beer and i didn't you know i'm just i down them like they're like i'm thirsty like it's quenching a thirst or something like that and when i go into that mode even the non-alcoholic beers get crushed <laughs> like three sips to a beer type of thing yeah and i definitely understand that but they also make you feel bloated and like hell so that's right helpful. and, and to answer the question that was five minutes ago no i don't think i often get uh uh, you know noted for that sort of thing mm -hmm. but you know um mentorship whether it be like sobriety or whether it be like 
you know young bands i think it's important to me like i do i do charge people to like consult but uh you know i the amount of questions i deal with on a regular basis like i always tell people that if you you know have one meeting with me you've entered into a lifelong correspondence and it's because i'm always checking in and i try to because i know that this is a brutal field man it is a brutal field and if you don't know where to start it's very hard and even if you do know where to start it's exceptionally hard and you know as someone who started a band that makes no sense like absolutely no sense on paper and you know i would go into these big meetings with these you know big agencies and they would just set me straight and they would tell me what i needed to do and i loved that you know i wasn't the kind of guy who took that personally I just wanted to know, you know, what I was doing wrong. So yeah, that's so the answer is you know, I'm I'm happy to mentor even if that's not a uh you know, it's not on my business card. Yeah, I just wonder because uh, many of the musicians that I hang with and and then started to become good friends and G's running the board today, watching the levels as well, you know, it talks about impact of a sometimes a very casual or a very um directly uh like a conversation that you either seek out or maybe it just happens one day i mean mm -hmm. i remember seeing you over front of my office one day and go hey and getting caught up and just you know i was inspired and triggered by your just sharing what you've been up to and like wow it stuck with me and then you know you've got the heart or the brains are both to say good luck today super bowl sunday i'm like dano like seriously he says well i got this weird <laughs> thing i remember football people's football fans you know who their fans yeah, right, are that's right that's right that was so cool to me like here right. i am just geeked all day my team is going to the biggest show on earth for the first well, not well first i do time. i do think we, we once on the radio half watched a football game while doing an interview so yeah you were my, one of my first guests i think i had you in with uh was jesse reed there uh i know we interviewed jesse reed and sarah Beatty once yeah 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 and that was, that was Wayne right on the phone once i think uh what's the kid from secord's name billy uh, sadler billy sadler was on yeah i haven't seen I him again since but i um i see sarah every now and again there was actually a festival in bc we were supposed to play with sarah this year actually but our band kind of died so we missed her and jesse reed of course you know they're playing these amazing songs i'm just there doing nothing just talking about the biz but yeah they're great I, uh, jesse reed what a songwriter and and sarah's new album uh bandit queen oh man it's just one of those albums that i put in a deck and it just stayed there and i locked in on it for months and yeah still... i mean i don't know how new it is now but we, yeah we had actually we had got her we've gotten her for a few shows or to, to ask her to open and um as a you know a solo performer on stage because obviously i drum behind her for years but as a solo per, a solo performer on stage, she um, she has something different. I think I think she has she has quite a show. She's really refined the show. You know, she's toured all around, and and I can speak about it for Hurricane too. Like, there is nothing like massive amounts of touring, just to create the comfortability on stage, to understand tension. You know, she's yeah. So she's really got it. Presence, you got it. You got it, or you don't got it. You can't learn to have what Sarah Beatty has on stage, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, you can get better at it. Yeah, you know, charisma you, is just, I think it's natural mostly, you know? Yeah, She's yeah, a, that's yeah. it. I mean, yeah, if I were in front of a microphone uh, singing, I would not have it. But hiding behind a drum set, it's great. Right. That's can we start a rumor about the Mar getting a Marantz project back f together for a small tour or something? Never. One show? No, never? No, that's <laughs> never. It's never going to happen, ever. Still in my deck, man. Yeah, what? trust me. I'm, I'm asked at least once a year by somebody oh, who has man. a great idea to put on a Marantz reunion. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Too busy doing what you're doing? Too busy doing what I'm doing, and I believe that, you know, it's And how can you say never? It's so absolute. Well, there's just, like, great you know i love that band i really mm. love that band so many people did as a saturday yeah. night staple of the mansion, absolutely right? and and i met a lot of uh, my now bandmates through it but uh some things are you know you don't want to uh cack on the memory of something great you know okay. and sometimes the memory is better than what the reality would be and i just don't know who knows you know we're all we're all older and it's different and maybe sometimes the 
the era and that time is is the unofficial sixth member that you never that you never noticed that it was just a time when people were in a different spot in their lives and that and that's probably occurring in different pockets that we don't know about because we're not akin to them right now and i think that's pretty neat so that's why i say no because that unofficial member just that time that era is not is no longer a thing you know uh I met Jacob there. That's how I met Jacob. That's how I wanted him for Hurricane. He got up with us one day. I didn't know who he was. Wow. And Did he, he rap? He rapped. He had, uh, <laughs> Tom Nems had been telling me about this band Baked, and I had seen Jamie Goddard before. And then he's like, that's the other rapper. And we got Jacob up and he owned the crowd. Really? And he was really drunk. And, uh, but he was amazing and he was, you know, he's a great guy. And I think we talked about Mr. Bungle afterwards or something like that. So, you know, I, I know when I find my people <laughs> and then years later, we, uh, whenever I started hurricane, I needed someone who wouldn't disappear in front of all those horns. And I was like, who is that guy? And sonically Jacob's voice is also like up here. <laughs> it's, right. like, it's like over top of all those things. Yeah. Back in the day, I think you guys opened up for USS in the backyard of the mansion house. And before I knew Jacob, I think that might have been the first time I saw you guys. Oh, right. Did, did that happen? Did you open for USS at... Uh, Jeez, I, I, we've, we've played with maybe, them a lot. Maybe oh. it wasn't. But I remember the stage at the back facing Ontario Street and just not being able to take my eyes off the kid. Like, And one, charisma out the ass. One, you can't, you can't turn away. And two, the whole band... And I still say this, it's probably lost its luster on me a little bit because I've seen you so many times now. But when I first saw you guys, it was like, this is the most fun bands ever had on stage. Just like you guys smiling and just getting into each other and just enjoying that moment. Not, oh, well, we got a gig, we got a paycheck and a bunch of beers and we're out of here. Yeah, It just looked like you guys were having a blast up there. I think we also... This is, it's kind of strange because the band does have a bit of a revolving door of characters. So sometimes you'll be like, oh, that's strange. Victoria's not at this gig or so-and-so is not at this gig. Why is that? And so uh, because of, you know, scheduling and life and things like that, you kind of have to have that. But no matter who comes in or who comes out, um, it it does feel like really family-like. And you don't um, – that's another thing you have it or you don't. And I've come into bands where you're like, this is a hostile environment or you know one person is the show you know i know i get a lot of i get a lot of credit for hurricane and it's very nice but you know uh i don't write all the songs you know guys are bringing in you know uh, chris sippus will often come to me and just sing, send me a voice note of something great or you know there's there's that old saying that you know amazing things can happen when you don't care who gets the credit and i remember when sylvie had emailed me just this like 10 second s snippet of smile and it was just the chorus and it sounded like it was recorded in a bathroom and i and she said you know this was as she was just joining she said you know would you be interested in doing this and i said you know like i if you're gonna gift wrap me an amazing song i will say thanks you know <laughs> i don't need to you know i don't have a writing credit the ego on doesn't it. flare up right off the bat that doesn't that doesn't hurt my feelings if someone you know on our our new record which will be coming out in the spring um there's a couple songs i don't i didn't touch I don't mind. They're great tunes. They didn't, I didn't have anything for that sort of thing. And I was, I was really, you know, I'm very happy about that. I, I like that ego isn't a, isn't a big part. And Jacob and Sylvie are both really comfortable taking the spotlight at different moments. Mm. And, uh, and Jacob's been good share on the stage too. No ego there either. I mean, oh no, just I think he also just likes open an, arms. A, an ability to breathe. You know, because before <laughs> Cause he, he was, some time he, now. He, yeah, you could never, you never stop. Now he gets like one song off. We do like one cover song while Jacob goes and drinks as much water as a human can drink in three and a half minutes. Towels off. Sometimes puts on a uh, Macho Man Randy Savage t-shirt and comes back out. It's pretty sweet. And then throws up when he's done. Always. That's <sighs> that's just a thing. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Uh, front fifty four. Uh, thank you, man. So cool. I emceed that event. And uh, Champion came up. Oh, and Everett. Steve, yeah. To, yeah, Steve told me afterwards, like, like, dude, you're, I don't know if you know this. And this goes back to, you know, I want to make sure I acknowledge you for your leadership because it's important. The music's important. It gets us through tough times. And you don't hear it enough. And that, I don't know, maybe you're less prone to it, but we all have that voice. You suck. You're not enough. Shut up. Mm -hmm. um, and Steve told me years later, I love Everett. 
Easy, 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 easy. Easy. I don't know yeah. if he's still going. But I think, by that. I think no, he's, he's just going by Everett Champion. Everett Champion, which is great. Um, your introduction. I think it was his first live gig. I think it, it Steve was said a, your introduction. Give him space. Um, you know, like this is tough. This is the kid's first time. I want you to really support him and blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, thanks, Steve, because uh, anyways, a uh, huge opportunity. But uh, we're standing out front after the show. Bergsma flies out and throws up right in the <laughs> right in the in the snowbank. Oh, like he yeah. could, he barely made it outside. It, I'm like, dude, you okay? He's like, no, no. I'm, okay, all right, all it's right. It's just a mix of I think you know maybe nerves at first, and then just like he goes so hard. And speaking of Everett, he actually we had had uh, we played at Lee's Palace. It was sold out, and uh, it was great. We got Everett up for a tune. Yeah. And so it was really neat for me, someone who's known him for geez, years and years now, to see him, you know, he's he's probably 19 or 20 now, yeah. something like that. And, you know, to see him in front of that crowd, you know, I've played Lee's Palace enough times to no one with other bands. So, to you know, I don't take for granted when I have a sold-out show. Yeah. And uh, so it's really, it really neat whenever you get to look. Um, I have this moment almost every night, and I think it's key because I – I don't know if I'm a daydreamer or what, but we'll be playing and I'll kind of look out and I'll look at the different people and think, you know, wow, this is really amazing. And you have these people from different places and expats from different countries and people with, you know, you know, sing uh, like uh, people who are just like, you know, they have like they're just from a single parent home or they're from somewhere else or they have a bunch of siblings or they're only children, you know. And I think like there's all these different and ages, you know, Kalen's 19, you know. Fraser and I are kicking off into other areas. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Uh, Fraser's one of the oldest bandmates, too. Fraser, Fraser has been around since the beginning. Oh, right. So those farm players, they would... My theory knowledge is pathetic in comparison. Oh, really? So oh. Is, are there are there tracks... He made it sound like there's tracks where you write the you know, the drums, the the like all the musical tracks for all the instruments in the song. I will, I will write out a bunch of stuff, but usually what ends up happening, especially when it comes to horns now, is... I will write out like horn lines that I have in my mind and send them to Alex, who is the lead trombone player. And he will chart them out, maybe, you know, harmonize them better, you know, and he has some great ideas. And he also understands the the instruments better. <laughs> you can ask anyone we've ever had play baritone sax. I really like it to follow bass lines, which is great, except for the fact that they have to breathe. And I kind of neglected that for years. So, you know. <laughs> So I'm, I, you know, I'm learning. I, I have much to learn, but there, um, but even Kalen, who again is 19, he co-wrote a track on the new record, and uh, I think it's just to listen to it for me is, you know, it's 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 pretty inspiring to hear guys who are that young who who have those kind of chops. Him and Patrick and Victoria and a lot of them, they're just you know some real talents. Uh, let's talk about the new record. How many tracks you got on it? Can you leak the name? Uh, the name is still up for debate. It's just got to get finalized soon. Uh, I think there's going to be nine tracks, okay. and yeah, it's pretty good. It's it's featuring, and it's great because there. I think there's 25 musicians on it in total. Right. We got uh, Mr. D from the Salads, who I loved when I was a kid, and we got a whole string section and uh, keys and all sorts of things. And our good friend and uh, merch uh, woman. Ashley Standish I also heard. played piano on it as well, and she did a fantastic job. We actually give her a little um, interlude piece after one of the tunes, which I really like. And uh, so, yeah, it's been it's been really nice. And I don't I think it's the first time when all of us listen to a record that you know some people in the band have teared up listening to it because it's the first record that really sounds like what we sound like live, and it's the first record where I was totally unscared. When you hear the last record, the last song of the record, you're gonna be like, "Whoa, this is very, very, very different." And, and brave. I brave. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, just like I'm, I'm no longer scared to write a song that sounds like maybe like a Lana Del Rey song or something. Like that. I just wanted, you know, we just write the songs we write. And um, the real tricky part is picking a single, but I mean, those are big problems. And Great problems. And it's almost like a, it's, it's a time capsule too, right? These songs. I mean, it's like what you're. It's who you are as a man and a band and a group and, and a family right now. Who cares? And uh, G and I were talking about this before you got here. Um, is Gary V kind of been an influence? And I don't give a fuck if 
isness well, because I, yeah. uh, it's you know and you were and G and I were just talking uh, something stuck with me the other day I get the whole like I don't want to say that because I'm afraid of what people will say about me I've got some opinions that aren't popular right now and and I've I've gone from left to right I'm more conservative now because these guys stand for free speech but you can't say certain things without being called uh, you know a woman hate or a trans blah 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 and Gary V got me to go okay yeah wow and when i look at where fear holds me back it, it makes me sick but what stuck with me that he said is it's it's not the fear of what other people are going to say it's actually the lie that you've created about what they're going to say because they never say that so you're actually not acting out you're not taking action because you believe something will happen and that's actually a lie and i just thought wow that's so powerful so i wonder if if that type of you know i, I listen to him a little bit more than i have now but he's really got me to a point like you actually care what other people think more than you care about than you value your own life and you're kind of so i i love that if that's a place that you're getting to that where you say fuck it this is who we are right now if it sounds like whatever so be it it's just i have a my saying is and i am a gary v fan but my uh my saying is i only do my own inventory you know you can worry about jim's inventory and g can worry about his inventory and if you ask for my help sure i'll you know i'll give my two cents but we can only do our own inventory we can only worry about uh the things that are important to us and i think you know when i sat in on this record what i was really watching was you know, Jacob really go to new ground and Sylvie to really go. And I think Sylvie's on every track except for the, the intro track and to be able to do the things that I think before we had, we had concerns. We were, you know, you're, you're trying to worry about mass appeal. Well, that's not what we're about. Right. What we're about is doing our show and, uh, and it's disingenuous to do anything but what you really want to do. And I think that in this instance, Maybe, you know, we'll, I think people will hear it and I think they're going to hear it. Like, this is a really, you know, um, a really wild record. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for it. And our, our, our road manager, uh, Kenny, really wanted to be on a track. Uh, and Kenny is always trying to get he's, on he's always trying to He's always trying to do something. So <laughs> he looks I'm, like a cheerleader at times. I'm oh, like, get this guy out. Oh, I, we, we love him. We love having him out there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's our Kenny hype, Holt. He's our hype Shout man. out to Kenny Holt. So, <laughs> Kenny, we had him. He's just, he asked me, he said, you know, if there's anything I can do on the record, and I couldn't really think of anything, but we have this intro track. So uh, we've been opening our shows with it for years, so we had decided to finally record it, and I got him his, he's got a voiceover. So he's the first voice you hear on the Hurricane record. Awesome. I know. Uh, and that is such an honor. I was in uh, Jay Beatty's studio a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and K Flip was bringing in some samples to scratch for the Head Heavy song. And uh, he wasn't happy. He couldn't isolate anything. He had a couple ideas. Literally brought his ideas in on a napkin. Like typical band uh, yeah. uh, musician, right? Comes in into the studio. Uh, Doug Mundy was playing keys. He's a friend of mine. And uh, and he says, I'm going to Beatty. We were having lunch. He's also a client of mine. So we are having lunch here. He says, oh, I'm going to Beatty's tomorrow. Lay down some tracks. I'm like, oh, cool. I've been meaning to get to Beatty's. Do you mind if I tag along? So he says, no, no problem. So, Beatty, hey, can I sit in on Monday's tracking session? He says, yeah, I got Monday at 5. I got K-Flip at 6. I got Pesh at 7. Like, you can hang around if you want. Anyway, when I got to K-Flip, he wasn't happy with the isolation that he was finding on the web. So he's like, well, why don't you have Jimmy go give us a head heavy, see how it sounds. So I went up to the mic, and Jay's like, give me a head heavy on the beat. Head heavy, head heavy, get louder, angry. And they ended up, I got this. It's my vocal. It I is, did not it, know that. It is a tight tune. It's not just the fact that I'm on it. And at the shows, Keith Flip Lawson, because when I was almost done, I gave a head heavy as a question. And he, you know how he stretches it out and puts the tempo down? It's like, head heavy? At the end of the show, it kills me every time, but... What an honor to be! Uh, Were you at the the ten year anniversary show? I was not. I, I missed it also. I was sad, and I had actually sent Kyle a message just saying congratulations. 
because uh, 10 years of being a band is not easy ever mm. and um you know uh it's tough i was at their first show i think it was opening for morantz um or it was at mansion house but i do remember it and uh yeah so it's neat you know and i once got to drum for them actually that thorl show you were you were referencing earlier is the uh, the only time i've ever uh, played with them but it was fun yeah it's yeah. interesting you know, I, dr- I definitely drum less for people like I used to. You know, I used yeah, to you go on the road with people for was it years and years I was playing for other people. And then somewhere around, geez, I don't know, a year or two ago, I really decided that I think I have a different skill set that um, I would like to use. And also, I, you know, I have an uh, almost five-year-old little girl <laughs> who's the cutest. And, well, you know, as you can imagine, you just want to be around. And it's it's important. It's important to be around. And... We understand with Hurricane, and it, one of the greatest things that's happened with m- myself having Juno, my daughter, and Frank, who was here with Jacob, is that yeah, if yeah. we're going to do things, they need to be worthwhile. And that's it. If I am going to, I feel a certain sense of responsibility that if I'm going to take Jacob away from his two-year-old son to provide something that is of value and you know, he's like me. We'll we'll take a chance on a thing, but there's not too many chances. And if you're on a like a big giant road stretch, well, it's different. You can try a few things while you're out there. But you know, I'm. It's it's we're really, um, I'm really cognizant of the things that are important to my bandmates. You know, Sylvie needs certain things. Jacob needs certain things. And the band, when they bring me an idea, if it's a great idea, I love a great idea. It's just tough because someone has to be, um, someone has to make the choice for better or worse. And I, I don't always make the right choice. And, you know, mm. hindsight is twenty twenty. but you, somebody has to make it. And that's the better way because when you have too many ideas, you get analysis paralysis and that's a problem. And I, so I talk a lot of times with bands about that, you know, you need to, we need to figure out who's going to sign things. We need to figure out who is going to make some decisions if not everyone agrees how do we break the tie things like that mm. so uh yeah it's you know it's it's interesting i i think naturally in interviews the the question we inevitably get is how in the hell do you do it well i'm crazy and i think whenever you see like i saw some little meme that said you know success is made of incremental changes every day and i work every day every day you know i come up with an idea or i make it you know even if it's Christmas Day, and just for a second, you make a list of something, you think of something, and you just put it in your calendar, so I'll do it. You know, I I just just go to work. Just, like, go to work. It's your, it's your job, and I admit that it's hard to have both time and money. I do admit that. That's tricky. But uh, there are hours. I get people all the time. When you find time to do it, I say just there are, there are hours unaccounted for in your day. You know, Gary Vee says it best. Sleep eight hours, work eight hours, hang out with your family for five hours. There's hours left. You know, there's a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So I'm just not a, I'm not a particular time waster. I, this is my relaxing time right now. This is, this is great. Like I, a show was just announced in BC on our page a few minutes ago. I'm drinking a cup of coffee. There's monogram towels. <laughs> how bad, how bad can it be? And uh, I'm glad you brought up Theater Chris because, well, it reminds me, I um, I carry so much guilt because I just can't, I can't make the 11 p.m. showtime anymore. Or I, <laughs> l- listen, I can, but I choose not to. Well, and, um, that's, that's you know, fine. the mansion house is my, my house, you know what I mean? I, I spent, I put my time in there. Uh, I've got some good con- connections and friends and friendships and, and um, you know, relationships that are, are meaningful but i just don't um su- you know i'm not supporting them like i used to be when i was there all the time and 11 o'clock is late man you guys are still getting people out but i appreciate it if you if you're doing a well, afternoon show or a 7 p.m well you'll you'll notice we do a lot a lot of earlier shows than we used to just for ourselves you know in terms of just peak hours for a band like us mm-hmm. i remember there's one show we played i'm not sure if it was last year or the year before it was in bc and I remember beforehand, it was like a one in the morning and we c- actually had slept before and backstage, you know, there's 10,000 people out front and backstage, I remember the stage manager saying, you guys are so quiet. 
and like one of the guys meditates and the guys the other guys are like playing on their phones and i said well you know it's late and uh, but we we just turn it on as soon as the door is open and they push out my drum set and they push out coops riser and they start to you know kenny starts getting the lights going and you know we have all this intro music then uh, it's a police academy theme which is awesome which i really enjoy <laughs> and uh then yeah then it's great then then it it comes to you but i do find it's it's harder like i have a sweet spot in the night where i'm i do my best work and uh not to mention you know as as an agent it's a it's tough because you often settle up at like three in the morning and my mind is not at its full functioning mm -hmm. capacity at at three in the morning i actually answered a text to a promoter the other morning at like i hadn't slept in about two days just because there had been so much work and uh I had to answer a text from a promoter and I looked back and I, he, he, he wrote me back and said, what the hell are you talking about? And it just made zero sense. So, you know, I, I think as adults, we have to, you know, we don't, we got to make some, some changes. We have to understand mm. that it's, it's okay if Jim Fannin can't come out for the opening band at 11. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. It doesn't mean you don't support the bands, you yeah, know? No. So yeah, you're right no there. no guilt involved. It's interesting when I run the, uh, and I talked to you, you know, I've done a few shows at Sessions on the River. I think it's, it's a great sounding facility. And if, if, if it's a band that's new and hasn't been in the studio, it provides them a chance to get something off the floor. Anyways, that they can, that sounds good. It's got a liquor license. It's a recording studio. The, uh, the um, acoustics are unbelievable. And, and it's very intimate because you're, you're right close to them. So we've done a couple like all day marathons. The first one we started at ten in the morning, went to ten at night, and we did a band at every hour. Last one we did, we started at two, and went to ten, eleven o'clock. Band on the hour every hour. But the sweet spot in the night's like eight thirty. Mm -hmm. Eight thirty, it's rammed in that place. So the closer is not. It might be the biggest act as far as name and recognition goes, but they don't have the bi they don't have the, the sweet spots at eight o'clock. Yeah, seven o'clock even. Well, it's funny for us. Our sweet spot is the way I pitch us to festivals. Is I say put us on after the headliner, because I do know that, you know, and a lot of times like we we play with like, uh, very varying headliners. Um, you know, last year we did um, play and then Bruce Coburn to come on. So um, yeah, are you f fear that you're gonna like oh, overshadow them? Type not, of thing it's not that. It's just that I think that uh, one of the things that we provide, you know. Like those are legendary guys, so that's that's not a question. They'll they'll hold up to that, of course. But what I mean is that uh, it's just like there's a flow, you know, and we're a natural period <laughs> at the end of the sentence. Oh, you know, where it, like where, it, where it doesn't really seem to make more sense just to have like this huge party and then bring it back down. Um, so a lot of times I pitch it like you know you probably have a lot of um, younger people at your fest. This is their time. And uh, it's been good. You know, we have more younger people than we've ever had before. We just played in Guelph. So, geez, thousands. The cops had to shut it down because it was so crazy. And the sound guys were complaining to me because as the agent, I didn't ask for barrier at the front of the stage. And I was like, well, you know, that's, that's not one, eh? that's new for us where it's like, OK, well, you know, we we're never trying to put people further from us. <laughs> you know, we usually Jacob and Sylvia are sweating <laughs> onto people. <laughs> And, and encouraging them to come to the yeah, but this day. you know I hadn't been anticipating quite having quite so many people. Private show or a festival? No, no, just just our sh show, oh, okay. and it was um, it was yeah. great, and it was out in a field, and it was awesome. But you know we weren't allowed to do an encore because you know just it had gotten wild. It's the only show we've never we never sold a piece of merch at because the cops basically came in and just that was that. But wow. again, we got to go home early, so we were okay. What time was the show? I think it was at like 10. You know, it was okay. it was great. But uh, they were ready to party. Like from note one, like when the intro music was on, they were dancing. And I was like, well, this is this is a good sign. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I always feel like Jacob has gr he has a real ability to appeal to an ad populum, like to a big mass. He knows how to. And I don't say control them, but he like he knows how to move them in the right way, whip them into a frenzy. Well, there's some there's a thing about you know, uh, you he he can really just take the air and hold it and wait for the right moment. Mm. But we started we encouraged like one person to crowd surf 
and then there was like four and then it was just we 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 lost control so that uh i mean and it can happen and you see how like uh scary things can happen that fast but it was um we're we're very fortunate that those things are happening now that we're learning on a bigger scale and having said that we'll still go to you know maybe in saskatchewan we're playing to a 50 capacity room because it's still it's still new whereas in bc we do very exceptionally well in alberta we do very well in the states we do very very well and the east coast you know it's, it's building and building and ontario is great but you know winnipeg you know we're you know we have to fight to get arrested we're still like we'll we'll do a res- really? we'll do a, we'll do a residency because it's like it's work and there's nothing wrong with admitting that you have a market that isn't isn't slaying yet well that's a wide open opportunity for a band like hurricane because when you come to town you should be the the greatest thing that's come to town in 10 years almost I well you know what though i mean for them what <laughs> was funny the last time we played we were playing we did three nights and the nights after they were having a residency from insane clown posse so you know at this venue so and they have this venue has like slayer they have all sorts of eyes so we're really lucky we get to play these big rooms but they understand just like we do that you know there are markets and you got it they're tough nuts to crack the 40 below is a and, tough nut <laughs> and we're very and we're very fortunate to be able to go to the states we just played washington dc and it was sold out and we played you know west virginia and it sold out and those things are really great and um you know we have a lot more festivals we're headed to uh, omaha and uh, idaho and like nebraska and i think we're working on some stuff in wisconsin there's all sorts of things you know, and I think Minneapolis and Fargo are on this tour. We're still, you know, still doing agent stuff. And now we have an American agent as well. So him and I are working in tandem. So it's a lot. There is just a lot of stuff. And I kind of like that maybe everyone in the band doesn't realize the amount of work I, I'm i doing. Because I, that's not their job. You know, they they show their support by being there. They come on, they kick ass. They do their thing. And I really think it's important that people have other acts. The people are jamming with other people. You know, I see on their timelines that one of them's putting out a record or another guy's playing here. And I think, you know, it's, it's great. It's so it's so good that whenever one of them, you know, I send out a date, someone says, I can't do it. I have this act that I can say, cool. And I move down the line and I grab mm, another player. Interesting. And it's really nice because sometimes, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I frown on it. I hate the moonlighting because I always see it as a threat to the the unit. Like when Beatty was moonlighting with them, and Mrs. J, or and then he started up uh, Miser Dally. Or I don't know who started up, but that that Miser Dally was the funnest freaking band ever. And I'm like, dude, and he played bass in Miser Dally, which I just love a guitarist that is filthy on bass and Jay's that way. And you know, uh, guys from uh, X Prime back in the day, I'm like, I do not support moonlighting, man. You guys need to. Like because it's gonna take away from the show, man. No, but, I, I, mean, I, I just, in my opinion, I disagree because I think that they have itches to scratch, and th- I, I try to never have a, an emotional response. So you know, even though I could really use them for a show, or I think it's a great opportunity, and they are telling me that they have an opportunity that is worth more, uh, of more value to them, I think it's important that if they know I'm gonna be cool with it, they're much more likely to come back to me. Whereas if I'm like, no, you do this, that's tight. You know, that's mm-hmm. tough. And there's times you got to take a hard line, of course, but it's, we're just really lucky. Like even now I just kind of sent them a thing saying, Hey, summer tours, like two months long. <laughs> what do you cool. think? Some guys are like in, in right now. And there's <laughs> other guys who are like, I'm just going to have to kind of see how this, play. and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's fair. Wow. And I will just, you know, I will deal with what I deal with. And, um, but the truth is, like, it's not really a hard sell to say, like, hey, let's let's go all over the place. We're going to go and play for great crowds, and you're going to have a super fun time. And, uh, yeah, like, in, in Hurricane, like, I mean, I've toured with other bands who, like, there is no laughter. Oh, Hurricane is full-time laughter. Full-time, yeah, begging on each Sleeping other. Sleeping Sipis. Sipis especially, <laughs> and I feel like no better for Sipis, because, like, He's like, I didn't even recognize him I, on stage after he cut all his oh, hair. I'm like, who's that? Oh, it's Sipis. I, I think it's it. Sipis is a funny beast because he's like so sweet. He's such a sweet, tearing guy. And for some reason, we love bagging on him. Like, it's just, we just, I don't know what it is. Like, he's just like, 
it, it's but i think you know much like a lot of the guys in the band he realizes that's how we show our love you know is like we just we hack on each other <laughs> and uh and it's great and same with you know people ask you well, do you do that to the women in your band I'm like of course they hang as great as any of the dudes and um they're it's it's quite a crew we're we're just about to drop we have like a tour documentary of it wasn't from oh, this year yeah. it's from 2017 oh, so it's it's be right before things blow up like it's right. just as things are going like we still have like smaller vehicles and actually the trailer g now has and we just have like uh you know things are starting to get bigger and um uh, so you know next year we'll have one showing how wild it's become but it's great because we have all these backstage interviews with people who you know you'd like to hear from you know what's produced what's, by the band produced by the band like what is uh, mike tuvey's producing it, it uh, but it's like uh, what if you know what is justin the trombone player say how did he come into the mix how did vicky come in and how did um these other people or what's what sylvie think because you know sylvie doesn't speak a lot in media for us although i'm going to change that this year because i'm well she is getting picked up here and there of people promoting the fact that she's like a, a woman front person yeah exactly and she's you know amazing at it and deserves it and actually she was just in a big magazine which is great and uh i was getting a lot of people messaging uh us about it i think she is a um i can understand why she people are so interested you know she's exceptionally educated exceptionally intelligent and uh and you know and then she's she's giving it her all and oh, and sylvie this it. is one thing i will say about sylvie and this is maybe you know and obviously she's a great performer she's she is a huge part of the business she's like my partner in the business but she did this thing last year and we started doing school shows because again i believe really highly oh, I mentorship love those videos man. and love sylvie we were i think we were in windsor somewhere like that and you know she dances you know kind of wild and kind of and she was talking to these i think they were probably grade eights or grade seven or eight these girls and they i think they were jokingly asking her about her dance moves or something and she just, she just said you know i learned to not care what anyone thinks and to only be me wow. and it was just like you know oh. and i always talk about when people ask us about the school shows i say so more so than the instruments we're bringing like some strong male and female role models like sylvia is a person you you could and should look up to as a young woman you know, it's someone who is, you know, very well educated, very well spoken, you know, has a great life and a great personality and, and uh, sense of humor. And you have to because when she first joined the band, I, I known Sylvie years ago and, you know, she you know, she believes what she believes and her and I will have it out, which is great. But I was like, oh, geez, you know, how is she going to fit in with, you know, we're so ball busty. <laughs> and I think, you know, instantly she just got into the fact that we were just like no one is safe in that group mm. nobody is safe which is good too because you don't want to, you don't want anyone to feel special either like <laughs> well, what do you no. mean well, why are you guys all nice around me when you're busting everyone else's no balls? no we we just we we couldn't do it if we wanted to <laughs> you know and like we poor you know poor patrick who you know he loves jazz music and i think we made him listen to every limp biscuit record and body count and <laughs> icp till he ICP, was just like awesome yeah you know stuff like that so yeah, I think the young guys we are always trying to. Um, I think for me, I really want them to know that this is an unlikely success, mm. and it's, you know, I maybe that's why I'm always looking out and I'm looking at, you know, there's there's Chris. He grew up in poor old, and you know, he's poor guy. He's in yeah, he's an only he's an only child. And there's Justin. He's from Toronto, and there's these guys, and there's and they're they're from all over the place. And I think it's really neat that somehow we're all together. And that it is an unlikely success. And probably when they start to put their own groups together, they'll see like, wow, it is hard. It's hard to be a three-piece band on the road where you're in one car with one hotel room and anything like that. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And that is why when people are asking me, like, why are you always, you know, checking in with bands or something? Because it's hard. It's, it's tough. It's easy to get... Um, it's easy to get down this time of year I, there's a lot of musicians who contact me because they know they should be reaching out to festivals they don't know how they need help and that's why again i'm giving a talk at mate which is you know it's like the business of music and it's kind of like you know i touch on a lot of things but i really kind of like to open it up and i keep it to small groups because you know 
maybe this guy's putting out a record and he has some questions about that and that will help everyone else and i really like to open it if someone says i have a touring question about the states great as long as it's not about grant writing because i don't know a damn <laughs> thing about grant writing but call anyways uh, call sylvie we'll <laughs> set you up. i don't know anything about it yeah how do you explain the success? And I'd like, you know, I am not shy about claiming I've been on your jock since maybe not day one, but oh, pretty, pretty early. Pretty close. Pretty, pretty close. Early. You're, you're and, one uh, of the, the, the OGs. I, you know, I like to think that uh, I've got a good eye for talent, and um, I, I'm so proud to see groups like you, and even Roadways for that matter, that really just really taking another big step. And you guys were around for a long time. You know, the album you can't do this was kind of a, a shot yeah. at like they told you you couldn't do it and why not you know and then the references to uh you know my son the hurricane is like a um rage against the machine with crossed with uh what's the uh, three dog night or what, what is the the, oh, the well, horn section or uh i think i heard uh Mighty Mighty Boston. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. But you know and what? The I last uh, <laughs> smile was being compared to Por uh, Portis Head, or what was the song that one of my buddies is like? Oh, they, you know that. That's cool. And, um, I, I love Portis Head. Yeah. But what do you what do you uh, kind of chalk? I know you've done your your diligence, the business end of it. You've done the tours. You know, you're putting out a decent product. But what do you? How do you explain the recent? And you mentioned most people think you've only been a f around for a few years. So. You know, there's no overnight successes. We get that. But do you, can you point to a couple decisions or, wow. or something that's put you over the edge that's brought you to a point where now, yeah, you're getting paid some decent money. You're playing in front of 10,000 people yeah. at some times. You know, it's yeah, unbelievable. It's really, it's really nice. Um, well, you know, when you take that kind of time, you start to, in my opinion, you, you know, you're writing better songs. And we opened it up. We used to be really concerned about who was bringing what to the table, and now we opened it up. We want to use the talents of all of our people. And uh, and Sylvie and I work very, very hard to to put the band in front of eyes. And I'm just not scared anymore. I just I, I developed a skill set that can help this group. You know, I think that young people who want to intern for me are often shocked to find out that, A, I don't have a business card. B, I don't have like any computer skills. I don't really need those right at the moment. I do very well if that's getting music synced on TV or that's, you know, uh, dealing with promoters or getting in those rooms. That's always been a strong point for me. So, you know, I think there's that. And we, we financially put our money where our mouth is. You know, whenever this tour begins, we'll be in the hole, you know, 30 grand or something like that. But it'll be, you know, it'll recoup. It's because I own... The record label normally what would happen is if you want to if you a record label makes you recoup before you get paid or they'll give you enough to live on the road so what would happen is we would probably have to go out for three months not see a dime record label gets paid back then you start to make your money but in this case i don't want that i don't want the guys suffering i want to pay them they deserve to get paid and sure there are times when we're flying places and i'm like well this will pay a little bit less and everyone understands but um that's what I want. I want it to be a working thing. We put our money where our mouth is. And I'm just not scared. And I'm not scared to leave town limits. That to me is the real problem with a lot of groups is you can become a Niagara superstar. And and yeah, I don't no just mean you outside of and I don't and I don't mean just Niagara in general. I mean it depends wherever you're from. You know, it's hard to leave the nest at first. Mm -hmm. G can tell you, you know, like you show up to Saskatoon on a Tuesday night. Well, <sighs> guess what? You know, you got the, like at first time, you got seven people in that club that you got to keep there somehow, you know, or you need to impress the bartender enough that they can't have you back. She's and, good at that, probably. Well, and that's, but it's an art, and it really is an art too. And not only doing that, but going to bed that night and still feeling good about yourself and getting up the next day knowing that you got to drive five hours to Red Deer and being okay with that. And if you are those, and, and imagine having 12 people behind you and crew. And mm. lighting rigs and risers and this big thing we have, I um, I think you know maybe I just have more balls and brains, but I think that it's I just like life is fleeting and life is short and life is about people and we need to um, 
I try to be good to my people and try to do something of legacy worth. If Hurricane fails, and eventually will fail, everything fails in the end, uh, that's well, okay because, you know, I left it out on that field. I died on that hill. Like, that's mm-hmm. what—that's the old Irish term is, you know, you know, will you die on this hill? And, of course, you know, you got to choose in your life the things that are very, very important to you. And some people, it's things in politics or things they, they strongly <laughs> believe in. So other people, they have religion, things like that. For me, the thing that brings me joy is playing drums in a really obnoxious band and making people, you know, like super happy and then watching, you know, and it. And the other thing is like, you know, I kind of feel like a dad because, you know, it's like, you know, if your kid hits a single in T-ball, you feel p- proud and, you know, I want look out and I watch like girls getting their picture taken with Sylvie. Or the young guys are, you know, you know, signing things for people. And I'm watching them use these talents that they have created. And I feel a sense of pride with that. Even though, like, I wasn't the one who created them. You know, I just say they they deserve those moments. It's actually the same reason I'm taking away the drum solos out of our shows this year. Because I, I no longer need it to be about me at all. It's, you know, I am very happy to let this, let these guys show you what they can do. And, like, let them have the light on them. You know, it can be a little darker at the back of the stage. I'm getting mm-hmm. long in the tooth anyways. So it's uh, – well, We love the drum solos. And you know what? I also love it when you're – and I'd love to, for you to expand on the fear and the difference of what it was specifically and how it overcome it and what, what a difference it made for you. But I love it when you get out from behind the drum kit. I saw you uh, L3 when Ash was uh, – Ash Boussault from oh, – yeah, yeah, yeah. USS showed up. I don't think I even understood that he was going to be there that night. Maybe yes. that was top secret. I had my niece with me. Um, yeah, Ash from USS. Yeah, and then to see you get out from behind the kit and rap one. I think we've got one on the Rock Art Town YouTube channel where it's an old show and you come up and rap a tune and you're like, this will never be done again, okay? <laughs> so here I go. <laughs> yeah, I remember saying, actually I remember it, that, Park, that, sh- that show it? in particular because that was before Sylvie because we Ash had done the vocals on that track. And I think there, there have been, there's been quite a few of us who have sang it over time. But uh, obviously... One fifteenth as good as Ash or Sylvie, but uh, I did it once, and I remember getting out there. Or actually, I did it a few times. I remember saying to Abe, who was playing guitar at the time, I looked at him and said, "Oh my God, they can see my body." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm I'm exceptionally tall. I'm almost six foot five. So to own your height as a front man, I you know also I have no I I didn't have like dreams of being a front man, so I never like worked on my you know stage moves in front of the mirror. So, you know, I was mostly had like hair brushes I was air drumming with. So uh, to be out there, I, I really wasn't sure what to what to do with myself. So, uh, but yeah, so it's, it was really fun. And I think that um, we're, you know, we, we will still try some stuff and do some fun things like that. And But compared to Jacob and Sylvie, you know, to have front people like that. It's just, you know, it's really... Uh, it's it's just such an, an amazing thing. And we act, and actually Jacob was sick once on tour, like very 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 ill, and uh, I can't remember. He had a fever and uh, he couldn't do a show. And Sylvie had to do it. And she rapped, she rapped like the whole show. She you know I think we figured out which tune. Yeah. I think I think we like threw in an Amy Winehouse tune as well, just to like so you know she wasn't thinking the whole time. I just remember calling her at eight a.m. and saying we're in a bit of a situation. Oh, no. She's like, all right, give me the day. You know, if they if someone had called me and said, "Hey, you have to rap Jacob's parts," I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm canceling, canceling this show. This, show. <laughs> you know, this is gonna be bad." But she is great. And uh, how did you? It did just, was it a natural division? Because I think sometimes I hear in a song, I'm like, "Wait, so Sylvie's doing that song tonight?" So uh, you know, there's obvious parts that yeah. are built and designed for Jacob. Sylvia seems, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but she seems to be taking over a little bit more of that. But like, she rapped on. Well, she can rap, right? So yeah. that's one of the nice things. So she raps on Pigeon Park. She raps on a new tune called Casserole. And she, uh, yeah. And so what ended up happening was there's a few tunes like Smoky Mirrors and Sullivan where it was all Jacob. And there really was no chorus. Sullivan, still love that tune. Yeah, right? it's, um, I don't really know what to do with that tune these days. Oh, I'm still it. figuring it out. But um, Old school, but just such a solid 
So yeah, well, it was our it was our talks it year. was basically our our intro tune this year. We have like this millhouse tune we always open with, and then we go into Sullivan with. But I'm not sure what we're gonna do this year. But uh, yeah, so we would give it to Sylvie because we realized that you know we were doing like a song or two until she even said anything. That seemed really silly. Yeah, and uh, and you know Jake was like, you can he can breathe more. That's less vomit. <laughs> that's a that's a win. <laughs> yeah, that's a win no matter how you look at it. Yeah. So it was just the natural. I think it was just natural progression yeah. where okay. maybe Jacob just asked, "What do you think of doing this one?" Or I think stuff so. like that. And there were still tunes where, you know, uh, if if someone, you know, we're we would never be against the idea that maybe we have a tune that doesn't have Jacob on it, or maybe we have a tune that doesn't have Sylvia on it. Like we, that's not the thing. If that's not what the tune calls for. Luckily, on this new record, it was just there's one instrumental and eight bangers. <laughs> But the last tune, you know, is mostly like keys, strings, strings a super Bon Jovi ish awesome. guitar solo. <laughs> so so is Bon Jovi. You'll know it when you hear it. <laughs> you know, it's like you gonna give us anything to leak? Oh no, no, I don't have it yet. Oh really? Yeah, the uh, I don't have it to leak, even if I could. But it um, gotta get better people on the inside. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna have to work on that. You know, I'm tough as nails. You gotta be good. <laughs> And it's not going to be too, too long. We are still figuring out with our publicist what the release day is. But it's because uh, there's a lot to put out a record. You know, you can just like show up and like drop a record on a day technically. But because we deal with like publicists and management teams and all this stuff and lawyers and shit, like it's, mm. it's crazy. If you actually saw what our crew is now and the day to day, because we have co management. Um, and so there's all these people who are like i get i get this vinyl which is great but i do like to you know have better ideas so if someone says i think you should run your pre-sale like this or you should consider that or make sure you have these things before you set the day okay okay you know it's just it is a lot mm. i can understand why no one doesn't i'm gonna crack into my near beer here <laughs> it's too early even to drink non oh it's <laughs> one o'clock yeah, exactly. the hour flew by I'm so interested to get you to expand on the fear. Um, and you say, you've say you said a number of times now, I'm just not scared. I'm just not scared anymore. And I wonder what it was and how you overcame it and what the impact of overcoming it was. Well, can you do, is, it, is it a certain voice in your head that says, you suck or care about what other people think? Well, or, you know, before I think it was a lot of this thing, which was, it's not there yet. Oh, you know, if that you was a, the voice. That was the scripture. Somebody yeah. saying to you, you're not there yet. No, like in my head, I was saying, you know, you're just not there yet. Or, you know, you would see another. There is this thing that happens when you see a band that blows your mind. There's this thing where you're just like, oh, security sets in. Holy shit. They figured out their thing. Oh, OK. And they like are owning it. And I always felt like we were good, but we did not have that yet. Oh. And uh, it. And again, I said, like I was saying, if somewhere around 2016, right as it was about to start moving towards the fast lane, and like this year, obviously, we just geared down. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think there, were, there was just fear that we weren't there yet. And I saw the Pocket Dwellers when I was like, I don't know, 18 or 19. And they, they like ruined me because I saw this band that was so much better than I could ever imagine. And we since got Nigel on track. He was on Pushing Up Daisies. Uh, from Pocket Dwellers, and uh, we've played with Great them. Great vocal. And, uh, and I, that's that's the one that started it all, no? I think that's how McConnell says, and this way, every time he's introducing yeah. Bergsman, that's Daisy's comes up, he's like, and this is the one that started it all, but was it that or not well, my style? A My Style was the first tune, but style, I think yeah. I think Daisy's really... It changed things. Great video, too. Great video. And great vocal on his part. What's his name again? Uh, that's uh, Nigel mm -hmm. Williams. And uh, we... We we're really fortunate to. I, I I like that tune actually. When we had uh, Drifter out with us, because Drifter would <gasps> he was a talent. He was out in. He's on your label too, right? Uh, I'm j I do some booking for him. Okay. He, he's not he's not a signee, but he's um, I do some agency work for him, and I think I'll probably end what up. What a voice! Yeah, it's beautiful <laughs> written music too. It's so 
wow. Yeah, the dude's the engaging. Dude's kind of like drinking hot chocolate. Oh. You know, it's just it just feels right. You don't get that dude to open for you if your vocals aren't on point because he'll just he'll well, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know he is he is amazing. And what's great is what I really love about Oscar is that we've had him open for us in Edmonton, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, like all over the place. And sometimes like we're talking serious crowds. And he just got he's got him. Yeah. He's got him. And uh you know, and I'll say this I, I have a, a really quick funny story about with Oscar and our worst show of the year was in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. And it was and it was actually relatively well uh, attended it was just there was just like a lot of things that were going wrong especially with sound and he was about to start and the sound man yelled out you know you don't have a monitor and oscar just said good i don't want a monitor that's when i started laughing i'm like you're one of us man you thank you for rolling with the punches <laughs> because there's just nothing you can do got a song called rolling with the punches and too. we got a song called that we never play that song live anymore but yeah no i i love that tune we just can't pull it off live Okay. It's a hard tune. If, unless you have like a full trumpet section, that is a hard tune to pull off. Oh, okay. It always sounded thin live. Right. I'd love to bring back Long Hair's Lament, but I just don't know where the hell I'd oh, ever throw that in a set. Oh, vicious I, tune. I love man. that tune. And in the fact, drum track on that is killer. I think that's the reason I want to bring it back. It's just the problem is it's like when you have a night of bangers, you can get away with daisies and you can get away with smile. And we have a new another slow tune on the record. You throw in Long Hair, people are starting to like – get a little dreamy oh right that. right so cool the 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 fear or what i guess i'm not scared anymore is conquering you're not there yet and then the impact over overcoming that fear is just you think it's the success or is creative outlet uh trying something new or well i think it's just realizing that we we had taken a, a year off when i had a kid in 2014 um we had kind of a I don't want to say it's kind of a legal issue in 2013. And I had, uh, I said, you know what? I think I'm done with this. And Nelson, who I'd started the band with, he had moved away. So um, when we came back, you know, Nelson was in for a little bit. And I kind of realized that, wow, this ha really does have a chance. And I kept, like, having nightmares that if I didn't really do something with this, I was really going to regret it. Wow. And as soon as I started to really, like, invest and learn and like work it every day like it's my job you know take less money from other things i was like no i'm not gonna have a job i'm just gonna work this because i can't have both time and money and i would just and i said but i'm gonna use that time like really use it so i do it just like head down and like all day there's stuff coming in i am scared to look at this phone when this is done because it's not gonna be pretty the email will be full again there's going to be messages. There's stuff like that. But this is good. This is actually, I like this. This has forced me to ignore that, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, well, yeah, so, and eventually. So you're the firefighter. You're the guy at the top. You're the CEO that's responsible for everything. If it fails, it's on you. And yeah. you deal with problems all day, mostly. The, the, the goal is this. When it's a failure, it should fall on me. When it's a win, everyone should feel it. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. That's And that's the... That's the glory and the detriment of this thing is, you know, if, if, you know, if it fails, you have to eat that failure. But what I found at first that was harder was when Nelson left and the successes, I didn't feel like I really had anyone to share it with. Mm. And uh, it has since kind of grown and it started to feel really a lot more family like again. So it's, it's great. We're, and so, yeah. And again, I just started being like, I'm just going to do my inventory. And if it fails, fine, let it fail. I'm sober. I have a family. I have a, you know, wonderful kiddo and I oh, have this, you know, and I did so this thing cute, that and video. I, and I end up with like, you know, I've got all these CDs, like every other band I've ever been in has like a boxes of like thousands of CDs in their basement. You know, we actually sell those. Yeah. Good old press time designs, by the way. Like we're, we're doing something like we're getting like 10,000 or $20,000 worth of shirts a year. Like it's a lot. We pay more in HST now than we used to make in like five year, our first five years. Mm. Oh God, that's painful. Yeah, oh yeah, everyone loves the, yeah. paying the taxes and doing the paperwork on that. I'm interested in how you refer to if it fails. I mean, I guess you define failure as the band not doing what it's doing right now, but it, if it stopped today, 
uh, I would consider it a huge success. Now, yeah. obviously, if it's not continuing, that there's something, you know, we want it to continue forever. But um, I've, everything up until this point doesn't make that a failure. It just means, you know, you're not doing new stuff, which, you know, would yeah, be sad for us all. But Yeah, it's about scratching those itches. You know, if you you originally set out and you have such small goals it'd be a nice to play a show at l3 it'd be nice to open for some bands we like it'd be nice to record an ep then it'd be nice to record an album and do some videos and then maybe do a tour and maybe we can go as far as fredericton and then you know all of a sudden and then it's everywhere well i guess we can go to the states now i guess we can start flying places now i guess we can buy a bunch of vehicles i guess we can buy all these things i guess we have lighting racks i guess we need to you know text on tour i guess we need to put the text on the visa i guess we have a lawyer and an accountant and this person and co-management through a huge agency and now a you know a giant u.s booking agent it's like okay it's as I, and i like that it's built but you know Eventually, if we want to call it quits, it's because you know you've done a lot, and you just you're you're it's really run its happy course. With it. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right now, we know it's not run its course. Mm-hmm. You know, we know that right now it's like when we recorded this at Jacasa Studios, and they've done like Alexis on Fire and July Talk. They were like high fiving, saying, "We have a hit record again. Thank God." You really? know, and and I don't expect, and when I say that, I don't expect it to be on the radio. What I expect that to mean, though, is that we're going to sell a lot of them, and it's going to get to a lot of people, and it's going to, and I believe it'll do well. I'm not freaked out. I don't know. I just like you're in a good place. Though. I uh, yeah. I just like we're doing it right, mm-hmm. and you know, and there's something about, and G can tell you this is the worst thing ever. When you record music and it's good, it sucks not putting it out. It's pain. I find it's pain. I've got tunes I love. Can I hear it? No, <laughs> you know it's it's the worst. And then you gotta you gotta wait because you got if you're gonna do it. You, in my opinion, for us, we're gonna have to do it right. And we know how to now. There's a long time we didn't know how the hell to put out a record. It's just like one day it shows up. Hey, look, we have this. You know, uh, it. That's another reason why I give these talks and do consults because it's nobody's fault if they don't know how. How the hell would you know? You know, it's difficult stuff, man. It's so difficult. It's just so difficult. And when I got sober almost five years ago, I was just like, I am going to spend some time helping. I really am going to take some of that time when I, instead of working, you know, instead of relaxing, because I'm just, I'm not really a relaxer, you know, um, I'm not like a, a Netflixer per se. I just, I want to help. So when people are coming to music school, can can you help with this? Can you talk to my class? Can you do these things? Yeah, yeah, I can. You know, or, you know, if if we're having these big seminars, well, yeah, let's keep it like 10 or 15 bucks. Let's, let's get someone who's maybe not sure if they want to play music into this thing. I think that's mm. good. It's important stuff. Some people came on long in the tooth. Ashley says she must have liked that comment. Oh, and the girl you bought your house from is... Jen. <laughs> uh, Kim Mitchell, we call her now. Is she a Mitchell now? She is married Mitchell McLaren. I have Kirby, first books. First book. Can't see from here. First come, first book. My equals my moonlighting motto. Only way to be fair to everyone. But he's kind of like a journeyman himself. Who's that? Being the DJ. Kirby. Yeah. Hey, flip. Well, you know, there's something about, you know, if they. Yeah, I, I think moonlighting is fine. You know, me and furthermore, if someone could pay you more, you know, get paid, man. Yeah, baby. You know, I yeah. mean, I uh, for years, I think it was one of the reasons I had such resentment to some of the groups I was performing with was because I know I should have been doing it with Hurricane and I was doing it with them and I was advancing their career. And wow, I had to wait to get home to do Hurricane. Right. So no more laying on the couch in Nashville. Yeah. Waiting to be called into the session yeah. because the drummer shit the bed oh, and you had to cover the track. I love that story. <laughs> yeah, I love I that it. story. Yeah, well, basically, this is what I do. I got a room in Nashville. I lay on the couch watching TV all day until I get the producer that calls and says, okay, stand by. The drummer shit in the bed, let you know. Oh, he pulled it out. Okay, great. Oh, you better get down here and save his ass. And then you have to break it to him. Listen, bro, I know your credit. You're still going to be on the album. 
but your drumming won't be. Well, I don't, like, I, I, ne- I, never had, I never had to break it to him. I would always just do what I used to do was, which I thought was the nice move was that, you know, I would say, listen, go sit on that drum set before we tear it down, get some pictures. Don't tell anyone it was me and do that. If you think I want to be on this pop punk record, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just here for my paycheck, man. So it was good. What a, a, what a st- I have no concept or I had no concept before that then that it could be a Rolling Stones track that w- what they brought in a guest drummer because the drummer couldn't handle that track. Like uh, this is common and, well, and, and there's no credit on the well, album. Probably not a Stones track. But okay. I mean, I think in those early stages of bands, when bands, there's a lot of bands doing demos and stuff like that. Like even the doors, like the, you, you don't know who's drumming on so half those tracks. Really? So, um, huh. Yeah, they had session guys. Wow. So that's it. I mean, there's a reason session. I mean, session work is not what it used to be. Like they used to, like guys were like making great livings. But I think it was another one of the reasons I wanted to get out of there. A, there's no, <laughs> there's never any windows in a recording studio. You know, you're stuck inside all day. But um, yeah, it's it's a vacuous field. It feels like sometimes. And I was, you know. Some of these, you know, kids who I was replacing, you know, this was their their shot, and I, you know, I just didn't really want to do that sort of thing anymore. Yeah. And it was also taking time away from yeah, doing Herc and stuff. Like I got I got work to do. Yeah, I got th- I got true. things to do. And if I'm, you know, also I want to be home. I have this little girl. She wants to go see Santa and ride on a oh the, the Santa the, Claus the train, which video I everywhere. If you, and you, I was so glad that I could share it yesterday because she is so cute. She's like, oh my goodness! I had to listen to it a few times to get what she was saying because she's well five and doesn't speak all that well. Well, yeah. she, she speaks great, but she's a kid and it's hard to understand, especially when she's screaming. And then, hi, mommy, yeah. <laughs> coming around the corner. You can, and then I realized, oh, were you at the Fairview Mall? Yeah, at the Penn Center. Is that where it is? Yeah, the Penn Center. It's because since then I've had offers to take me on the train. <laughs> so Jim, <I'm laughs> you want to go on the ride on Santa's train? I'm going to tell you this about that train. It they were having a good laugh trying me trying to fold my body into that thing. You looked actually legitimately frightened when the thing started. I out. will tell you this: I am not. Jacob and I have something in common. We do not like rides. Oh, I hate I, them. Too. I am not into them, and I think you know. And even that thing, obviously, it's, there's nothing to it. But, like, it's uncomfortable. My head was touching the ceiling, you know. I just, my knees were pushing the front of it. I was like, oh, God, here we go. But, yeah, again, you want to be home for that sort of stuff. So that's, again, where the agent work comes in. It's great. So I can be working at booking Hurricane. And while I'm waiting for some of that stuff to come back, I am booking, you know, I booked Katie Gata some shows. And I booked Drifter a bunch of shows. And I booked... You know, I'm booking human rights for their tour, the reggae band, and uh, just a, a bunch of acts, you know. So, and I was at uh, Coalition Music. They have a CMI program, it's called, that basically is like agent management training. And I did that this year, which was great because, you know, like I've always been pretty knowledgeable about the stuff, but I went in there and there was like so much. You didn't know what you didn't know. Yeah, exactly. And, or, and even just refining that because things are changing and it was great and you know um liam who is the uh, management of uss and tea party he was like one of the instructors and uh val who worked at sony for years it was really really amazing stuff Hmm. and it's funny the first day this guy sits down beside me and he said oh i'm from edmonton i was like oh that's great i've actually booked a bunch of shows through daniel wentz he's like oh that's me (laughs) and i was like oh Hi, he's like, you're Dano then. I said, yeah. <laughs> and it was just funny. And I was like, wow, you're like the guy. You know, and the, and the girl beside me books the Calgary Stampede. And, she was you know, the girl. And it was just like, oh, okay, we'll, we've all spoken in this group. And then this this other woman came in and she's like, oh, I booked you for uh, in New Brunswick at Folly Fest. I was like, oh, right. And so there's a real, uh, there's not a lot of people who want to do Oscar said it best one day. He's like, there's too many of me and not enough guys like you to book us. And, uh, and I think, you know, it's wrong too, because he's doing very well on his own, but it, it, it's tough. Like there's not, there's a lot of people in, in my profession too, who are trying to take people's money. And I don't want your money. If I can't provide a service that is worth something for you, because I know what that's like. You know, it's like the supernova effect or sonic bids or any of the things that I think are not maybe worth their money. And um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to be 
you know, on the straight and narrow, make a living and not be a corrupt slime all about it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Integrity is uh, a it's very valuable trait. It's worth something. How many um, silos do you think you're operating in now? Like how many hats do you wear? And you got obviously you're the business end with some help, a lot of help for the mice and the hurricane. But now you've got the you got the label, which yeah, uh, so just talk to me about the different silos and what they actually entail. Uh, obviously, the band speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, that. yeah. Obviously, there's the band and the drumming, and then there's um. Yeah, there's like management. So we have co-management. So it means that I do most of most of everything in terms of like, um, you know, hiring new people into the group. Like, you know, I deal with our lawyers and I deal with our accountants and uh, I do all the books. So I do all the books. I handle all the money. I'm the business manager. So I have that. I also own the label, which means I own our master recordings, which means that I inherit the debt. If Jacob and Sylvie die in a plane crash tomorrow, that debt is mine and mine only, no one else's. I um, I do, I work with the syncing. Syncing is when you get music on TV or radio. Well, TV generally or movies or things like that. And you deal with what's called music soups, music supervisors. Commercial applications. Commercial applications, there's lots of different ones. So there's that. I was dealing with Stingray Music this morning. They're the ones who have those channels on TV. That, oh, uh, love Stingray. Yeah, yeah. 902 is my channel. Right. Alter yeah. Alternative rock. Yes. Adult alternative rock, I think. So there's, there's, so there's that. I've discovered more music on channel 902 on Bell 5 than I have almost anywhere lately. Right. Stuff like that. I deal with the radio trackers, Spotify trackers. Um, as the label owner, you're responsible for a lot of different things. You're responsible for handing out royalties like it you know so i if somebody is a co-writer on a song i owe them a mechanical royalty there's all sorts of math to figure out i do all the tour booking i do all the hotel booking i do all the advancing generally a agents don't do advancing advancing just means things like if i book gia show uh i after the money is set i give him the promoter's email and they hash out when they show up who needs a base amp etc with hurricane i do everything i create these like long lists we call them the tour readers um and i like them because it also shows what i've forgotten to do i have that i take care of like just even the physical things like our trailer that lives in a lot for three months you know all that stuff you know i work on some of the editing stuff with the video guys you know we talk about i write all the set lists um i do i take care of I, a lot of the publishing stuff uh, Sylvie does all the grant writing, which is great. And so when we have a meeting, it'll be generally Jacob, Sylvie, and I, and she'll bring in, like, the minutes. Oh. She'll be like, what do you think of this? I'm like, I hate that. This is good. This is good. This is good. And, yeah, you know, like, whenever I say this, I, I don't want it to sound like it's egotistical. And there – because other people in the group have skill sets sometimes that are better than I have at a lot of the things I do. Uh, so, for instance, like just general computer skills. They, uh, but I know that if I do that, I'm not bothering them, and that uh, it's going to get done. And I think that um, democracy is very. I am. I am empathetic, but we are not democratic. And that is the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I will listen, and I am. I am interested, and given you know, I like to think I'm an intelligent person. Given better options, I will take better options always. Guys will come to me or they'll say, you know, the merch set up, I've noticed this. What do you think we should do? I, I, I say that all the time. What Thoughts? I thought if we did this, okay. Because most of the time when they're coming to you with a complaint, they have a solution. I love a solution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not so pig-headed, I won't take a solution, you know. And uh, But I love a solution. Sometimes we don't have one. You know, it's, uh, geez, it's a lot. Pesci says Sonic Birds is garbage for sure. Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just totally. And yeah, it's uh, you got to watch out. Management and things like that. People like that, they can take advantage of, of people because I have a real anger towards um, people who take advantage of people wanting to be stars or wanting to have a career. You know, I've been asked a lot of times, can you be, come to this so you can be our industry person there? No, because I'm mm -hmm. not in the business of signing anyone. I have too many fucking things to do. And I don't want, I don't want anyone to think that, you know, they hand me their demo that I'm going to change their life. I'm not going to change their life. I'm too busy p 
paying my phone bill, you know, trying to, you know, booking this so that I can live so that yeah. hurricane goes on so I can pay everyone in hurricane. I just saw what I paid out for the year. God. Yeah. The biz. The biz. The biz. And uh, who are you hot on these days? And not just who you've got signed. Let's talk about who's who you've got signed and you're promoting and booking for and that you're really hot. But uh, um, I love pick. Theater Crisp introduced me to Jen, and I, they have just completely blown my mind for a young three-piece. And I never say young because it doesn't matter. They're just a good band. Yeah. But I've heard uh, them. the, the three-piece, they sound so much fuller than a three-piece. Like, I just can't. They're they're fat with sound, and and when I told Nicole that, she's like, "Oh, dude, thanks." I'm like, "Why is that a compliment?" She goes, "Oh yeah, for a three piece, you want to sound full." Yeah, and they, <laughs> they, you know, I was the three piece gig. That's a tough gig, but it's also an amazing gig because like that band right now, I can book them everywhere. It's like you, you know, you can make way less money and do way more because of that. Why? Because there's. Um, a, there's less mouths to feed. You know, you need one room. You need one vehicle. You need oh. so little infrastructure to create something, oh. you know. And um, that's Even between a four or five piece, then it gets well, more complicated? Well, yeah, once you start getting a five, it can be tricky. You know, you, you do need a bigger vehicle. You need some extra things. Or it just depends, like, what kind of people you are. Some bands camp. Those bands are smart. I'm, it's not me. At, mm -hmm. at a big festival... If they say, can you camp? I say, no. <laughs> There's probably people in the band who would. I'm not that man. Oh, I remember Fire Lane 11A, man. Uh, if you weren't camping, it sure was looking like some of the guys were. Oh, was remember that a, that's row? Pete's dog? Yeah. Well, well, I luckily lived down the street from fire, that Fire <laughs> Lane. So that was not an issue for me. Actually, I think I was in Boston at that time, and I think Cooper was drumming. But wow. that's, yeah, that's the art. And Vegas Funeral, I just, I generally just have, you know, Hurricane's my main thing, and I run, uh, I'm not putting out anyone else's records. I'll just do agency work for them so people can hire me, things like that. If I have the time, you know, a lot of times I just say, you know, call me if you get stuck. If you can't do something, or right now I'll do festival outreach because this is the time of year where people need to apply to fest and they just don't know what the hell they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's fair, it's hard, it sucks, you know, it's like a lot of work. And, uh, you know, I just spent so, a lot of time with the band last week just getting all of their s assets together so it looks like something. They're like, I got this stuff. I don't know what to do. So we made it work, and that's good. And so, you know, and Katie got it's good. I think, you know, we got her, hopefully, a, um, an audition at Mariposa and some some other stuff. And I'm going to Folk Alliance. I got a scholarship today, I found out, for Folk Alliance. So I'll be uh, for agent work. It's like a big, giant like uh, industry event for folk artists in Montreal in February. So I'm going there. So that's nice. Cool. That's G cracking his knuckles on the Facebook feed. If you, if, if you need them, you're standing right beside the mic. <laughs> Crapping on my, uh, my personal support over here. Um, as Dano takes his, one of his final sh sips of gross. Oh, that's um, rough. Dude, uh, I, that, that one time we met out front of my office uh, in the Lake Street Mall. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Entertainment Plaza. You're coming out of Tim's. I started drinking coffee, by the way, um, after 20-some-odd years off of it and uh, n quite enjoying it. But uh, you tell I, th I think you were coming up on a year. Oh, sober. Or yeah. Yeah. Jeez. And wow. then, uh, you know, that that's a private struggle, I think. And I don't know if you started it that way. When you when you decide to quit, but you've been o pretty open about it since, and I think that's such a, especially for a man. I know it sounds sexist, but especially for a man, to m make himself or avail himself to the vulnerability of like, hey, I was fucked up. I was in a bad place, and and uh, and uh, I'm winning now, and so maybe when you you first quit you don't want to tell anyone i don't know maybe you need the whole community to know because you need them to keep you accountable but yeah it's it's park avenue or park bench it doesn't care right it doesn't care who you are and um yeah you know it's it's uh it is a tough game it is a tough game and when i got sober i i had to for my health for the fact that i had uh 
I remember I had, for the first four months my daughter was alive, I was still drinking like excessively hard. And I, you know, and I had not felt any real big connection. And then like one day I came in the room and she was like, he's here, sweet, he's here. And I was like, oh my God, we need to get this together. And I remember that weekend I was in New Hampshire. I almost, I was almost actually in an accident that almost killed me and someone else. And I had uh, realized that that was it. That was that. I remember saying to Fraser, who was the bass player, that uh, I'm done. And he had just said, okay, you know, kind of like, you know, your words are worthless. And that, that, really? that'd, be, that'd be, and you know, it does. You felt that right at the time? And that's what I felt like. And I understood. I like, I understand why my words are worthless to you. Of course they are. You know, any true addict is probably a liar to get what they need. And, um, I, yeah, I got, uh, I got sober and I, I was going to keep it to myself. And then I realized that, you know, I, I made one post, but I think it was six months sober or something. And, uh, the people were starting to come. They they needed help too, and I would at first I would tell them, uh, I I don't I'm holding on by a thread. Like I don't know. I was mad. I was mad that I was sober. You know, it's like why can you drink and I can't drink? Now I don't care at all. Now it's like okay, well you know I can understand. There's times when I need to remove myself from a situation because it's tough. Like it's usually it's, it's ninety ninety five percent of the time it's great, but every once in a while tough to say no. You mean? Yeah, well, yeah, sometimes, you know what I find is hard? It's like the times when you're supposed to drink. Like, um... In celebration? Yeah, like, you know, like Christmas, you know, like people have some drinks. Oh, or have or a New shot with us. Or New Year's or St. Pat's or whatever. Like, parts where, like, you know, like, if you saw someone drunk, it wouldn't be weird. If you're, you know, like, the right. festival downtown, you know, then you're all ripped up. Well, it wouldn't be that weird. It's like everyone's partying. Um, but the one I really miss is I just miss like there's like just like a general camaraderie to like having a beer on like a Sunday afternoon. But, you know, you lose some friends that way because like there are some people you realize you only have a relationship with because they're drinking involved. And it's no one's fault. They, you just you don't know how to like deal with it. And that's OK. And um, I I'm OK being sober. I, I like it. It's it's different. I, I feel like I've helped a lot of people. I let you know, I. I can't help them all. You know, my mm. job, my not my job is not to save people. My job is to deliver the message, and I will deliver the message. And I, uh, I have work to do. I have account. You know, I got to keep myself accountable. It's not. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not. It's. I. I anytime I hear someone is trying to get sober, I think, geez, you know, you gotta, you gotta. It's gonna be a road, but you know, it might be, it might be a better road. For me, it was a better road. For me, right. it's it's it seemed to work out. I like it. I like that whenever I'm in at night and it's like nine o'clock, I'm not thinking, I gotta go, oh. I gotta get out. For what reason? So was it? Out, what was your main? Vice? Yeah, booze. Yeah, yeah, booze was like. I I did some drugs too, but that wasn't really my deal. But yeah, booze, love booze, and it's great because it's like it's everywhere and it's easy. And it, and the other thing was, as a musician, I never really paid for booze. You know, it's like on the house or, you know, it's really cheap. And I was playing like these house gigs and, you know, I never drank to drive. I wasn't that guy. I was like, oh, you know, this was good. But then, you know, the pursuit, that's a lot. There's like a lot of pursuing and a lot of recovering. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm happy to be past that. I'm, I'm not sad that I drank how I drank. Like, I'm just, I'm not sad that I drank. I'm just glad that it's done. Mm. You know, you had to like, there was a time when it was like, this is a problem. And right. people but people are going to have to talk, you know, people are talking to me, whether it's band leaders or friends. And and then I, I started, because at first you're really, you're like emotional. I don't like really like being emotional. But, you know, you're emotional that they would talk to you about your problem. And then you start to realize that, man, they probably don't want to have this talk. They're probably dreading having this talk with me, and uh, it must be that important that they're having this talk with me. And so, yeah, I remember detoxing out, and, you know, it uh, that was a rough time. I look back on now and kind of laugh and just say, oh, geez, you know, I didn't know what I was in for. You know, I didn't know what it was like a 90-day. It was real bad news <laughs> for about 90 days. And then, like, 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 one day it was just like a little bit of light came in. I was like, you know, maybe I should go do something. And then I started realizing that, you know, for years, all you've been doing is thinking about yourself. Now it's time to help some people, whether you whether they have anything to give you or not. And, you know, I 
I, I try to do that, you know, whether it's drinking or whether it's giving someone a ride somewhere or doing something or, you know, I think musically it's usually the thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you want a consult, yeah, it's going to cost you a few bucks. But if you want to, like, just talk, it's just, just grab a cup of coffee and shoot the shit. So the alcohol was the actual issue. It wasn't so much the gateway into because, you know, I, I know so many people that quit alcohol because it puts them in a very bad decision making place and then it leads to more of a party that could go on for days and without the alcohol that bad decision just doesn't get made so they quit the alcohol because of the path it leads them to but you just struggle with the the free booze and the try <laughs> yeah. everyday drinker oh yeah and i you know whether I, you're performing or not you drink yeah, at oh home. yeah i remember you, it being you, like 9 a.m in vegas what? and drinking and i'm like oh my god you know and because you're one of the things is that you don't know about tour because tour gives gets this amazing light you know people think tour is glory tour is a lot of like continental breakfasts and a lot of like being fucking tired and being lonely and missing someone and missing and and when i say missing someone it could be your significant other but it can be like you see oh theater christmas having that 10th anniversary show i would like to go to that i can't or there is a lot going on and you do it because you believe it's important but it is not sometimes it can it's better now these days it's much better for us but they're still like well if we're gonna do this it's 11 hours or you're gonna drive home from halifax i don't suggest that but uh you know there's all those things and you know we're lucky because we're like flying and doing things more and it's great but it's not always that way and that's that's another reason like people drink because they're like man you know my kids at home or my girlfriends at home or you're worrying or you're just like man i'm missing another birthday another birthday because this show is great and i have to do this show and it's important but it's also in alberta so if i'm gonna go to alberta i'm gonna at least i'm missing at least a week and a half i'm missing two weeks you know and yeah it's just like a lot so that's all that's what i kind of i think that had a, a big part of it for me you know it's like i'm in a different country awesome i'm playing drums for a living i'm getting paid a ton of loot time to party Mm. Mm -hmm. did you much uh, mentoring in that department the sobriety coach ever oh well yeah i'm i I don't want to be anyone's sponsor but i uh sure i get a lot of people who message me and that's why every year i make an announcement and i had a friend of mine your anniversary of sobriety yeah on september 21st every year i do oh and before my birthday there you go and my a good friend of mine who will remain nameless he he was the partier of partiers when i was a kid we like learned to party from him he was wild he toured for years did all this crazy shit and he got sober and i was much more heavy-handed than i've ever been with someone in terms of telling them to announce that and i said the reason is i think you should say something is that if you can do it and i said you are like the poster boy you are known as a drinker if you show that you're a year sober that you have gotten healthy that you have put your life together again when things were going like the world could see it was not going to be like that i said i think i think it's a good move and he did and i don't know if people ever reach out to him but maybe they do and again it's not all the time but sometimes like i just like bang get a message from someone a friend request you accept and someone says hey man I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm going to like lose my kids if I don't smarten up. Why am I still doing this? I'm like, well, because you don't have control anymore. That's it, man. That's why. Like, I get that, you know. So Kirby got uh, sober on the same day. He says weird. Get out of here. Yeah, September 21st. Same day I got sober. I wonder how long it's been for him. Thanks for hanging in, K-Flip. Wow. Um, Good for him. Congratulations, John. That's awesome. It's it's yeah. it's an art, and I think you know what's awesome is I have a lot of friends who are like, "Do you mind if I drink drink?" No, I don't mind at all. In Most fact, of them, I insist. Don't be different. Don't yeah. treat me special. Yeah, don't as, stop having as fun long as in you don't get presence. on my case. I yeah. think the funniest one was I was at um, I was at the merch like last year, and I you know I never go there anymore because you know again you just stick out of those spots. And there was that this was guy, your drinking place. Eh? Yeah, it was one of my watering holes. And this guy was talking about how he's like, "Come on, you're." you're just have a drink you're way behind it. the bartender who i know just said you don't know dano if you really knew him you'd know you're way behind <laughs> you got some catching up to do and i thought that was really funny i was like oh yeah man i just 
I can't I can't be bullied into it. And people still bring shots up on stage, and I like you know you know cheers. Yeah. And I, like, put it down beside the high ad stand, and then I somebody else will get it. I like push it over to Cooper, and he's happy to have it. <laughs> Coop. You know, Coop will take care Coop. of it. You know, Coop's Love Coop's Coop. young. You know, he needs loot. He's happy to. He'll take that shot. That's what I always do too. I get the drink tickets, and I I always laugh because everyone knows that I get drink tickets too. You know, we got this like big roll, and I hand them out. And at the end of the night, guys are kind of like see them. They kind of like. You got any tickets? Hey, uh, hey, Dan, you uh, is there any tickets left? <laughs> and so, I'm, so I'm always like, well, I don't know. <laughs> See that big hardware box hasn't gone out to the trailer yet. <laughs> Could have something if, uh, to do with you. If I, if I move your box, can uh, can I have those two tickets? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's great. I like it too. I buy beers for people. You know, hey, you want a drink? I mean, mm. it's uh. I think I think that's wonderful. Yeah, you, were you a cigarette smoker as nope. well? Nope, had two smokes in my life. Okay, one menthol, one regular. Neither worked for me. Yeah, good. Especially the menthol. And so, how many? Uh, how many? Okay, first of all, when did you announce that you were quitting drinking? Did you do it for day one, or did you keep it a secret until you I, had a few I, months under your belt? I was um, I was like horribly depressed. Like I, I think after I detoxed. I was like, I remember I was like, kind of like a blubbering 90 fool. 90 days? I had, the, yeah, it's, I'm, like I couldn't control my emotions. All these crazy things happen when you get like r- sober from like that kind of addiction. And um, I I was super emotional. I was just like tearing up all the time. It was really awful. And, um, and then I hit like this crazy depression. And then I think as I came out of that, I, uh, I was like, I think, I think I can say something now. You know, Are you prone I, to depression? No. And I'm so not. this was new, and how long did that last? It was a, it was a month long. It was about or a month, After or, the month or two. Days? No, no, it was, it was in, during that time. Okay. It was about a month or two long. I'm not prone to that at all. I have obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a bit of a pain, which can also explain to people why I'm always doing. Mm-hmm. Because I don't, I don't, I run faster than everyone else. Just naturally. Some people can't focus. I over focus. Really? And uh, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's, uh, yeah, so I'm not depressed. I'm just like, I'm like the opposite. You know, I'm just like, I'm like manic. manic Let's yeah. do something. It's like in the studio, the the recording engineers had a good laugh because anyone who goes in the studio knows that you hear this a lot. All right, guys, uh, come in. Let's take a listen. And when we go in and listen, I'd listen once. Say, okay, like, let's not pat ourselves on the back here. Let's go do this right and move on. And that's the reason, like, when we had... 20 when you have 25 musicians nine songs people coming in and out and hard schedule that's why i'm like someone's like are you producing this record i'm like well producing in the sense that i say yeah it's good enough and let's let's move on you know i don't have any brilliant musical ideas i'm not necessarily bringing the best take out of everyone i don't i can't do that there's a lot better musicians in this band than me a lot better but i'm pretty good at saying like that is good enough because you can get in your head in a studio the studio. You'll convince yourself that, uh, that maybe this tone. No, you sound awesome. That was great. Let's move on. Mm. That's, that's hard telling people it's good. We're going, we're moving now. You know, no, don't be left behind. You got this, you know? And, um, I think we have a new tune called Mr. Holland's locust. It was the only one that took, a while to record because it's really like so weird but other than that everything was like bang 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 even uh she died before seeing the hollywood sign which is the very last tune hollywood and uh <laughs> titles are up yeah well it's just called hollywood it was originally oh, had that okay. big long title uh but mr holland's locust i made sure to keep that title and but hollywood was really like it was so weird and conceptual that i was like it i was surprised it was so quick so that's good yeah now, uh, why is it Bergsma and you had the same, like, you're going to love this album? What's the expectation you've built around my fandom that's... It's not yeah. just you, Jim. It, I honestly yeah. have never, like, I hear Hurricane Records, and I'm like, ah, there is a good piece. Oh. There is a nice piece to that puzzle. And on, is this what you want? It was just, we had to do so much post work. There okay. was tuning issues. There was a lot of things. And it just, to me, didn't totally sound like her again. This, I listened to it, and like, and you'll also notice Jacob, he's like screaming for one tune. Everything else, he's talking about, he's got like this kind of candor. 
It's like his voice is a lot lower. Things have Sylvie's on every tune. The production value is the highest we've ever had. And then you it's had a lot of experience per, uh, performing the shows live too. Yeah, all these ones, with the exception of the last two tunes on the record, we were, we had basically wrote in the studio. So okay. seven of the tunes we've been like banging out. Banging. Some of them, some of them for two years. Some of them like over like maybe the last month or two. And so that's why you figure it sounds like you actually guys do live because you perform them so much before you went into the studio. I, went, I wish I could just explain it better, but <laughs> none of us can. It's just like we all just feel really like, oh shit, it sounds like us. Like it really wow. sounds like you know when you hear like a song on the radio and that quality to hear it back like even after mastering because mastering like depresses the hell out of everything just to be like holy shit i guess we are putting this on vinyl it sounds that good oh i can't wait man no it's coming don't worry i vinyl. cannot not do vinyl i i'll get mugged at the table yeah I oh man have you got everything on vinyl no we don't no. have any oh, vinyl. Oh, okay. that's why in but every single show this time oh okay oh i'm telling you someone's gonna yeah, stab every, me in the kidney every, if i don't everyone's heard my complaints about vinyl but what, what's the problem with my my turntable the preamp level that it goes out through my phono jack it's just so it's wow. like it's way lower than all my other inputs and my amp has to work way too hard to get no, probably because it's from like 1971. It is. Jim. It's a. It's an R461. That thing's ten years older than me. That's I don't a R461 Kyocera, uh, 50 watt a side amp with 3 dB headroom. When we used to actually include headroom in amps, and so it sounds more like 120 watts a side. It's uh, it. Uh, Decimal zero zero eight THD or something like that. But I don't I know. We'll what fix any of that, that thing over and over yeah. and over and over. Kyocera is an industrial ceramics company. Well, it used to be, and they had this one series of really high-end audiophile stuff and then they got out of the business and i worked at a place and we bought a bunch of them and oh man i spread that r461 around to so many it's an integrated amplifier but it's just absolutely gorgeous but i'm wondering if there's a like a preamp adjustment for and that's an old luxman turntable too but i just can't get the volume out of it you know and my if you crank it up so much then your distortion goes your heat starts to you know what Max you for the amps capacity, but you know what you could always do, just like get it on Spotify, <laughs> or just like buy a CD for Christ's sake. And stop. Oh, I thing. love that vinyl. Man. I like vinyl too, but I know it's, the shit's quieter. I, I, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna pretend to understand the subtle nuances <laughs> that you clearly understand, but uh, yeah, it's it's just quieter. Like the there you go. It. There's my professional <laughs> input on this. Yeah. Dan, I really appreciate the time. What didn't we touch on today that uh, w we should? But uh, I, I want to get you out of here on time. Just or, uh, uh, yeah, no, you said an hour and 46 know. minutes, kind of. What time did we start? Thanks, G, for running the controls. I don't know, man. And, uh, I think that um, I don't think I have much to say other than it's good. This stuff is good, you know, and uh, I think it's good that you're doing this, and we got to just keep shining the light on people. That's it. And we got to keep encouraging people like everyone who comes in to if you do believe in your music, go outside, get outside this comfort zone, because when you play your hometown, there's your aunts there and your friends from work and stuff like that. And it's a and there's nothing wrong with your hometown. It's great. You need that show. You need a win. Good. I get that. Mm. But you need to go and if it's a loss otherwise why is it a loss and what do you need to change and what do you need to do how do you build it that's how you learn i only know people are just like oh i wish i knew all the stuff you knew i'm like i only know because i'm a chronic failer because i do things a lot and if they fail i don't i don't get angry about it i figure out well what what did i do wrong you know why does Winnipeg hate me? <laughs> you know, like, so th that sort of thing. What do I have to do? I got to talk to people. I got to talk to promoters. Is is there different nights I should be here on? Who Where should I be playing? Is there a festival I can play first that maybe more people would see us? Is there a better place to, a uh, better time of year? Is there a better place to play? That's it. You know, you got to do that sort of work. And I have such huge respect for anyone who gets out and goes. Mm. Gets out and goes and lives off continental breakfast and the that terrible coffee you can make in your hotel room you mm. know it tastes like it was filtered through a sock you know it's like uh that there's an art to that and i and i can understand that it's not as simple as saying just just go 
Like I get that there's life and there's things, but a lot of times the biggest thing standing between you and going is your brain. Stop that. Your brain is like a bad neighborhood. Get the hell out of there. Wow. Two more words. Um, yeah, I really uh, appreciate you acknowledging that and rock our tones become something that, uh, you know, I'm, uh, again, for the love of it, you know, I didn't want the footage to just go away. It got shelved after Keith Bellamy, who the, yeah, you know, the he, founder. Um, I remember doing an interview much I've like got, this. I've got it at all. His house. And it's, it's running on, uh, well, not maybe that interview, but a lot of that stuff is back on the YouTube channel and stuff like that. So, you know, never, um, it's been, it's coming up on eight months or something like that. I didn't buy this, uh, the, the assets with the thought like, oh, this is going to be like, it's what's going to make me all the money. It's been running ad free donation. I haven't had one donation yet. I just tweeted for the first time yesterday. Hey, yeah, we got this thing going. And oh, by the way, if you want to shoot us five bucks, it'd help because there's monthly costs and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, Burger nicknamed me the praise master because I unknowingly like shower love on artists that actually it turns out they need to hear it you know because they're not hearing it because that voice tells them they're not enough or they suck so much and it's just naturally who i am as far as saying hey way to go you made a difference for me your music means something to me so that's great to see that you know you mentioned encouraging people is something that's really important to you because uh yeah it's you can focus on andy petrowski and all the bad things all you want mm. but you know the truth is there's like there's light in this town mm. there's there there's things happening and you know i go to mate and i see people coming up with ideas people going to jams going to writing things i saw this thing that g did the other day this jam with sippas and i thought i was listening to it and i was yeah. like this is really great yeah you know this could be a band or there's all sorts of great stuff happening i love it even if i don't get it i'm going to this is my goal this week check this out this is like crazy for me I never go to music. On Thursday, I'm going to go see the legendary Klopax, which blows my mind that I'm going to see them again. Friday, I'm going to go see Strange Shakes. Saturday, I'm going to the Weather Wilds show. And Sunday, I'm going to go see Everett Champion play. I'm going Where to go like he? four. And a, he's at Warehouse. Three of those shows are at Warehouse. I go to Warehouse like three times a year, and I'm usually playing it. And I'm going, and I saw Katie Gata last month. I'm trying to, while I'm home, for this very small time, I want to go out and I want to be some support because there's like... Are you, well, you know how much that means to people. Well, and there's even the light. fans of yours that see you in the house are like, oh, cool, Dano's here supporting whoever. Yeah, or maybe they awesome. don't care and it's body yeah. and yeah. it's someone who paid cover. And no, they care. For sure and they so, do. And I think that it, there's, you know, like I'm not going out because they, they'll think that it's anything important that I'm there because I don't. But I think it's just great because there's like a body there. It's a paying person who's in checking out the show seeing stuff i love that yeah. it's great you got any shows uh I, I saw that uss every time they play what's the one in niagara falls new york rapids theater oh, Rapids theater, yeah. so every time uss plays a show there uh jason does a uh a dj set afterwards now he doesn't do that anywhere else on the road apparently it's just at the rapids and it's become this little secret like there's going to be a session of you know where he djs after a dance party is anything have you got any special spots that you do something unique every time at or no you know all traditions ev every place is there's usually a party we play this little tiny cafe neat cafe near ottawa and it's very it's only holds 100 people and it's an expensive it's a, <laughs> you guys it's, the it's band a, takes up half the bar well it's an expensive ticket too but we still keep coming back to it what's the most you got for a ticket that people pay yeah every, i don't know like not at festivals because festivals are obviously very expensive but i think like a hard ticket like 40 or 45 bucks something wow. like that Good. and and we don't even like that i prefer not but i understand at a place like that people are coming to do something interesting and they know that 96 other people can only be there and do you think I, they're coming there because they're like i was there when i think they come like i saw july talk there i remember and i saw white horse there and uh you know because it's an it's a different show you know, we might be more inclined to pull out some slower stuff. We might be inclined to pull out the stuff we don't normally do. Maybe let Jacob ramble on a little bit longer. <laughs> you know, he he has that ability. If you no, didn't, if you really? didn't, if you didn't know. Wow. Yeah. So we used to have this tune called "Where's Sly." It was a cover song, but 
we would just let him ramble on about this. I, I, I don't even remember what it was about. I think it was like a homeless person, right? I think they were like a fictional. And he had this whole story. And uh, so sometimes in those instances, we'll let those things happen. But we don't have anything like um, where there's an underground trumpet session happening <laughs> later, you know. <laughs> I mean, maybe there isn't. I'm just not invited. <laughs> not, not impossible. They want to leave the boss back at the hotel. Sweet, my brother. I appreciate the time. It's very cool yeah. getting out of here on time. Seven minutes early, but you did say I knew you could carry two hours. Just so you know, Jacob, you did not carry two hours. But we did have Frank, and he was getting tired, and he was running around banging on some drums. I was thinking of bringing my daughter just, uh, just because I thought it would be really funny, but she she is in grade school. And that's, yeah, that's and so upon. cute. Thanks for posting that video, and I was really happy to see that I could share it. Yes. Uh, so I took my uh, liberties and shared it. I saw that it, I didn't want to be creepy, but I saw it had a, another share. So um, it's uh, extra cute. Yeah, it's, it's super. Oh, I just uh, she's adorable. But your face, and then right at the end, the eye roll that gets frozen in the oh yeah, yeah no, she's uh, she's my sidekick. That Hi, one. mommy. Yeah, I know. It's, it's <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm like, yeah, I had to hear it three times to hear what she was saying. The, this is great. This is uh so thanks for that, Sweet. brother, and thanks for your time. And uh, I what um uh, I guess w when are you gonna launch the new uh, tour dates and stuff like that? Tour dates are just rolling out, and so uh, are you announcing them as they come in, or are you gonna wait? No, until we have we already have almost fifty, so okay. we just have to kind of like roll them out. Like certain festivals are announced. We we just announced Mariposa, and today we announced Robson Valley Festival in BC. And so we'll just keep rolling some of those bigger ones out, and then there will be like a bigger blast of like venues, and then at some point there will be an album announcement. You know, as that all infrastructure all gets into place. Cool. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for that, man. I'm really stoked, and I'm proud of you. Thanks, man. Um, I'm um, I'm happy that I was early to the party. And do uh, I get a, a monogram Jim Fannin towel here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll discuss that in future sessions, maybe. But uh, thanks for your vulnerability for being open about uh, all the things. And you know, my hope is in uh, and for acknowledging, you know, the focusing on the artist is important. And uh, G and I did a deep dive. I did like what I just called an air check, for lack of a better term. That's what they call in the radio business when you're when you're program director listens to your show with you and tells you what sucks and what was good mm -hmm. um we did for lack of a better term an air check on uh his last album and so it played in the background and we just discussed every tune as it went by and like i love the idea that you know there's a deeper look into the music with the people that wrote it and well let's uh, let's have one of those after you've had like a month or two with the record yeah bergs and i can come back in and give our two cents and maybe what i'd like to do uh, i i talked to bergsman a little bit about this last time but as the album aged it seemed inappropriate but i think i'd like to attempt a review because i'm such a fan and i have stuff to like i have the lyrics i have the whole library well i'm not so big on uh check the barometer because i don't have a copy of it i'm gonna I have to i don't think i have library. a copy of it yeah. um and uh so yeah no i appreciate that but i think i'm gonna attempt a review because of my bias number one and so it'll be mostly positive obviously because i'm a huge fan but then i've got the everything to compare it to these yep. previous albums that i'm also in love with but uh yeah uh, i think it's important to let you know yeah man i mean uh cash and dead man's check it doesn't matter what album it was man it stayed in my deck for a long time and Sweet. it meant a lot to me till i have to shelve it because i'm so tired of it and then <clears throat> it's like pulling like not that you pull an old lover off the shelf but it is an old lover it's you fell in love with this album you were on it for months and then you had to okay i'm done with that and then when you bring it back you're like oh i remember how much i miss this now man so it's uh i love how it goes in and out and you heard it here <laughs> Jim Fannin's old lover. Cashing a dead man's check. <laughs> Back in the rotation. Okay, we're going to put this up on rockertown.ca later. Uh, and you can check out some All Niagara music there as well. You know where to find Dano online. Uh, check My Son the Hurricane out. Uh, documentary. I'm pumped about that, man. When uh, I guess we just stay tuned to you when it's. Yeah, end of December. Really? To watch it? That's the plan. It's coming out. Christmas present, just like Leonard Kenny. 
share it around. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, G, for helping out. And if you could sign us off, that'd be great. Peace.